the adaptation of technologies for farming system is challenging and dynamic issue for farmers extension services agri business and policy makers the agriculture sector needs to employ a wide range of evolving technology and farm practices across many different farming systems to meet its new demand for the consumer and the and the public for the various agriculture goods and services without a look out for their sustainability thus increased consumer demand is driving the adaptation of new technologies which are cost effective and sustainable in long run so with the blessings of our honorable founder president sir dr ashok k chauhan chancellor dr atul chauhan sir vice chancellor madam professor dr balvinder shukla i warmly welcome you all on behalf of entire amiti team to share valuable ideas on this important topic i welcome our keynote speaker Shri Rajendra Thakur ji, Business Development Manager, South and East Asia Carbo Equipment Limited; Dr. Nuthan Kaushik, Director General, Amiti Food and Agriculture Foundation; Dr. R. S. Antal, Advisor to Amiti Food and Agriculture Foundation; Dr. Ravindra Rana, Professor, Amiti Food and Agriculture Foundation. And now request Dr. Ravindra Rana to welcome our speaker. Over to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shalini. and a very good morning to all the panelists and the attendees it's indeed a pleasure for me to uh, say few words about this workshop uh, because uh, technological changes uh, have been the major driving force for increasing agri agriculture productivity and uh, from technological adoption to increase production progress productivity and farm incomes last few decades have seen policies for agriculture trade research and development education training and advice having strong influences on the choice of technology the level of agri horticulture production and farm practices agri horti sector is becoming more and more integrated with the nutritional security of the increasing population global markets are demonstrating increased sensitization to issues related to environmental food safety and quality animal welfare human rights etc which are increasingly impacting the regulations and thereby the technologies agri horti sector is faced with newer challenges to meet growing demands for safe food and yet remain internationally competitive at the same time we must also meet the united nations sustainability goals today farmers advisers policy makers are all faced with complex choices they are faced with a wide range of technologies but but they must also deal with the uncertainties of both the effects these new technologies will have throughout the agri food chain and the impact that a whole range of policies will have on the sustainability of farming systems the focus of this session shall be on the suitability of technologies that have the potential to contribute to sustainable economical competitive profitable agri horti farming systems uh, the express goal uh, is to apprise especially our budding farm techno technocrats students about newer technologies relevant to sustainable farming about policy changes needed for encouraging technology assimilation about impact of latest technologies on enhanced agri horti production about technologies ensuring ease of doing agri horticulture business and compare the conventional with latest technologies in sustainable and profitable agri horti business we are indeed uh, blessed to be uh, to have amongst us sri rajendra kumar thakur ji who is currently representing cravo equipment limited canada in the fast developing south and east asia region of the world sri thakur ji is known as a cross functional expert in controlled environmental agriculture and latest agriculture technologies to create sustainable and profitable farm business ventures for the last 7 years uh, in, from september 2014 he is representing cravo equipment limited and cravo cravo equipment limited canada has created a niche for itself in the world 
uh, especially in their uh, flagship program, which is about retractable roof production system. This production system allows farmers to produce more food per hectare, producing larger fruit with a la longer shelf life over a longer harvest season while using less water and virtually eliminating the chemicals. The farmers who accomplish this simply by using the retractable roof to take advantage of the benefits of the natural outdoors, a greenhouse and a shade house environment while avoiding the negatives of each. Uh, Sri Rajendra Ji will take, explain us the benefits of having this structure which will go a long way in, in uh, incorporating the right technologies for sustainable agri horti system and of course with a motivation uh, to our young uh, students who can take this as an option, who can think of this option for their entrepreneurship or for future uh, professional goals. Sri Rajendra Kumar Ji's uh, professional accomplishments before joining Cravo was also in greenhouse and uh, he was worked as a greenhouse and hydroponics expert in Bremi Developers Private Limited and, um, uh, and, and under the, his uh, guidance and the cooperation of his company, he established a plant tissue culture laboratory for, um, at the farmer's level for the first time in the region. And he has extensively worked with NGOs, farmer producer organizations, farmer technocrats, extension workers, and, uh, and, and also he has worked as chief executive officer in Greek, green tech agri um, sector private limited and wherein he has planned and executed greenhouse projects for different agroclimatic zones of Himachal Pradesh for flower, vegetable and herb production. He has managed a team of professionals from uh, greenhouse, micro irrigation, tissue culture, crop production, marketing and logistics. And uh, before that, um, uh, much before that, he has also worked as production development and marketing manager for Himalayan Seeds, where, wherein he has been associated with developing agronomic, providing agronomical support, greenhouse management, integrated pest management, post harvest management, and marketing support to greenhouse uh, growers. So, all of us would be much benefited by the experience and the expertise uh, which would be shared by Sri Rajendra Kumar Ji. And uh, before I welcome Sri Rajendra Kumar ji, uh, uh, we have the presence amongst us uh, and in order to provide guiding thoughts on the issues involved, we have the uh, most erudite uh, expert amongst us, uh, Professor Dr. R.S. Entel, who will be the chairperson of this uh, session. And uh, Dr. Entel he is currently an advisor to AFAF and MIT universities in matters related to soils. Besides being an eminently accomplished scientist administrator and uh, scientist administrator of repute. So uh, with, with these few words, I hand over to Dr. R.S. Entel to take the proceedings forward. Dr. Entel, sir. You, first of all, I am very thankful to the organizer for giving me the chance to chair this important session on sustainable agri horti system. I, it is my great pleasure to welcome dear panelists, students, faculty and participants on behalf of Honorable Founder President Sir and Dynamic Chancellor and Vice Chancellor. The basic objective of this conference is to bring industry and academia on a common platform to understand the needs of corporate world. In this session, there is only one speaker, Mr. Rajinder Kumar. He has done a commendable work on this greenhouse management, precision and hydroponic farmer. So he will deliver his talk on advanced technologies for agri-horticulture agri production system. Before I will request to Dr. Rajendra Kumar ji, I want to give my views on three aspects. First, what is the role of horticulture production in India and what is the scope of hydroponic in India and the latest technology developed in the field of nutrient management for sustaining agriculture. At present, horticulture production in India is about 32.48 million ton and area is about 25.66 million hectare. India position is second after China in the horticulture production. During the last five years, area and production has been increased about 30 percent. 
the contribution of horticulture crops in indian gdp is around 30.4% horticulture sector is more profitable than agriculture sector and it will also provide more important employment compared to agriculture sector post harvest losses in fruit and vegetable in india is about 30 to 40% it accounts about 93000 crore rupees post harvest losses can be minimized by adopting simple management this post harvest management practices many low cost technology have been developed during the last decades but their adoption rate is very very poor even less than 10% in case of small and marginal farmers hence there is a need to lay down more demonstrations at farmer field to popularize the technology developed through the extension age agencies now regarding hydroponic farming the scope of hydroponic farming compared to traditional farming in india is very high because of two reasons first population is increasing next per capita per capita availability of land is shrinking at present per capita per capita availability of land is 0.21 per hectare hydroponic farming in india is at beginning stage and is only limited to metro cities major advantage of this system is complete control over climate we can save water optimal use of nutrients and high nutritional quality the major disadvantage of this is the initial operation cost is very high and there is a lack of expertization many state governments providing subsidy even up to 50% even then hydroponic farming is not popular in rural areas or in backward districts of india so hence there is a need to provide more subsidy even up to 90% to increase the farmer to adopt this hydroponic farming through the motivating through the this uh, extension age agency now about the latest technology that have been developed in the field of nutrient management food grain production of important issue that you have flagged and let us see how technology can help us uh, what is the experience of uh, professionals in the field shri rajender kumar ji Rajendra Kumar ji please unmute yourself Thank you chairman sir thank you Rana ji Abhishek ji Salni ma'am Nutan ji and the faculty of uh, Amiti University the one of the prestigious uh, university in the world so it is my privilege that uh, I got a opportunity to speak uh, in front of a such a uh, high gender uh, technical persons so i will be speaking on the uh, topic uh, let me share with you i hope my presentation is yes it is visible to you visible thank you put it in the view mode sure. yes yes so today's topic is advanced technologies for sustainable agri horticulture a uh, production system so my focus will be mainly on the uh, controlled environment agriculture and hydroponics which is the buzz of the today's uh, uh, world so so my name as uh, dr rena has given a very uh, very uh, Well, he spoke a very beautiful word. So uh, thanks very much, Dr. Rena sir. You are my uh, professor. You were my teacher at the Solan University. So it's my uh, uh, thanks for giving me such a uh, uh, wonderful opportunity to speak today. So uh, all of you know that uh, that uh, our population is growing uh, that at a very fast rate. So by 2050, we will be around 164 crore uh, people in india and simultaneously the urbanization also going very fast so by 2050 the 50% of our population will be living in the urban areas so now the comes the question the food so where will be the the food will come from so uh, so that the tech the, the the need for to adopt the new 
more advanced, more uh, highly productive technologies, which are sustainable for a longer period. So, if you see the that uh, current status of food production in India, we have, uh, as Dr. Rajendra until sir has also mentioned, that uh, we have a uh, good production now, but still there are a lot of people, they are... Uh, um, not getting the uh, food properly, proper food. And uh, almost uh, 195 million people, they are uh, undernourished in India. And if you see the that uh, index, uh, uh, hunger index, we, we have a ranking 71 in the world. So despite that uh, we are having a good production in the food grain, in the vegetable, in the fruits, but still, uh, that uh, per capita uh, consumption of uh, uh, that uh, food, uh, that quality food is still very low. So, uh, that I will speak, uh, as I told that, I will speak on the controlled environment, agriculture, hydroponics, but I will also mention that, that emerging technologies that are uh, now uh, we need for, to meet out uh, the demand of the, uh, that uh, growing population. So we have, uh, beside these two things, we have vertical farming, urban farming, precision farming, organic farming, then biotechnology. Because these all these uh, these emerging technologies, they are playing a very very positive role in the Indian food security uh, system. So. Because uh, Rena has already, sir, uh, has already uh, mentioned that my experience in the protected cultivation, which is almost uh, more than 25 years. So, uh, uh, it is actually uh, the process of uh, that growing the crops in a controlled environment. So, most of you people might have heard the word the greenhouse or the poly house or net house or uh, now the glass house, so many uh, that uh, uh, technologies are available depending upon your climate or need of the crop. So all these uh, technologies, they are uh, uh, capital intensive, uh, varying from low cost to high cost, and uh, but they assure the very good quality and uh, yield. So... Uh, there now the system are coming up that we can grow the high value crops year round so i will be speaking on those crops also so advantage uh, with the, this protected cultivation that we can uh, we can provide a better growing environment for the crops and uh, we can protect them from the adverse weather conditions such as we have a high temperature during summer we have a low temperature during winter we have a very heavy rainfall during monsoon season and sometimes we have a very uh, high wind pressure or uh, you can say insect pressure also. So with the adoption of the technology, we can increase our yield to 5 to 10 times depending upon the uh, technology adopted and uh, crop crops. So uh, the technology uh, that uh, we, we save a lot of resources also, They're like uh, Dr. Rajinder has said that uh, how to use uh, fertilizer efficiently. So we can uh, reduce the input, mainly the fertilizer, water, because water is a very scarce. Now we can uh, reduce the water consumption by, uh, just you can say, one-tenth of what we are using in the open field. So in these protected uh, structure or in the hydroponics, water consumption is very low. Even the power consumption, that is also very low. And uh, uh, what, what we get, that we will get a very good uh, uh, growth and good quality that we produce and with the minimum chemicals, that is the actually need of the, uh, that uh, now the, because we, we have used lot of chemicals and fertilizer uh, after the green revolution. But now these emerging technologies, they are actually, uh, uh, they are reducing those chemical use and fertilizer use. So, uh, you might have uh, heard about uh, different structures that are, uh, that are uh, used in the, this uh, controlled environment agriculture. So, I will 
mentioned the from low cost to high cost. So net house is actually very uh, useful structure for the uh, tropical dry uh, condition, just like uh, Rajasthan or you can say the, the part western part of Punjab, Haryana, then uh, Aurangabad. Uh, the area that where rain hall is very less, it's less than 500 I mean, per annum. So you can have a net house because it's a very cheap structure. You can uh, install uh, on a larger area, maybe one acre, two acre, or five acre, ten acre. So now a lot of people you might have seen in Haryana or in Western UP also that they are installing these uh, net houses for growing the cucumber, uh, capsicum, and a lot of other vegetables also. So, uh, in these net houses, uh, only the issue that uh, you have during the rainy season, that uh, when uh, you have uh, rain, then yeah. it, it actually uh, trap the humidity. So, then you will have uh, some uh, insect uh, or disease problem during rainy season and also during winter also because it, it actually uh, uh, obstructs your sunlight and... Uh, so it's a because it's a stationary uh, structure. So uh, either you have to remove uh, the this uh, shading net or insect net, whatever you install. So you have to remove during the winter so that you can have a crop on the on the floor. And uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, difficult to grow organically also because now a lot of demand is coming up for the organic stuff. So those students, uh, those who are belonging to Rajasthan area or Haryana or Punjab, so I think that they can adopt uh, these net houses for uh, growing oxygen cucumber. You can have a, actually three cycles of cucumber. Normally in the uh, normal open field, we, we normally have a one cycle or maybe in some area we have a two cycle. One cycle of cucumber is uh, around 90 to 100 days. But uh, with the, uh, these net houses uh, that a uh, lot of uh, grower in Haryana or in uh, Rajasthan, they are having uh, minimum three cycles. So, so they are producing uh, during summer and price they are getting very good. So uh, uh, if you got a chance to visit uh, any farmer on the national highway between uh, Chandigarh and Delhi or maybe to, toward the Jaipur side, so you, you interact with those growers. Uh, if you are having own, your own land or something like that, you can adopt uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, low cost uh, technology for the crop production. And uh, next uh, level, level of technology is actually tunnels. So they are slightly costly. per square meter. Type of tunnels. One are low tunnels, which you normally uh, uh, install during the winters, just, uh, f just to protect the crop against the cold winter or frost the injury. So, a uh, lot of uh, cooker bits now, if you might have seen in Punjab or in Haryana or in Western UP also, so they they install the low tunnels, very low tunnels, so to grow the cooker bits, even the this uh, squares also, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, some growers they uh, they they grow the peas, green peas also under the this protection. Uh, so uh, because purpose is actually not only to protect but also to have an advanced season. So they they harvest the crop. Uh, uh, one week or two week earlier, so that they could get the premier price. So uh, similarly, these tunnels are actually uh, very, very, very cheap structures. So you can uh, during the winter you can install. Then uh, once the summers come, then you can remove those structures. So uh, uh, so there are high tunnels actually that you can see in the picture also. Because these these high tunnels under, uh, mm. the, you can grow uh, uh, so a lot of uh, high value crop like uh, uh, berries, strawberry, uh, blueberry, blueberry. So uh, you can see here in the picture that uh, under the tunnels you can see the blueberries uh, grown there. Uh, 
only the problem with they are not suitable for a summer production uh, if you want to produce during summer so you have to go to to the higher elevation just like Shimla or uh, Nanital or uh, you can say the Uti area or Kashmir area you have to go to the colder place so that you can have a production during summer also and uh, 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 other issue that uh, with the tunnels that uh, because they are open from the side from the front and back so insect pressure is also there so and uh, sometime during uh, rainy season so they, they become very hot and humid also so it's a, sometimes it becomes very difficult to grow uh, the crops so it is better to actually uh, uh, install tunnels for the winter production in the plain area or for uh, uh, at the higher elevation during summer then next uh, technology is actually uh, polyhouse. We call natural ventilated polyhouses. So a lot of uh, investment uh, government has funded uh, this polyhouse technology in the last uh, 30 years. And uh, one of the first projects that IRI has established that the controlled environment center that was something uh, in the uh, 1995 or six that was center of excellence with the uh, Israeli technology that has been set up. So that was the one of the pioneer uh, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, for the technology demonstration and uh, uh, so poly houses uh, they are a uh, uh, very good medium cost structure. You can uh, uh, you can grow the crop almost uh, seven eight months in this only issue that with the poly house they are not very good for the summer or any season for the winter extended season from september till uh, april may they are very good but uh, from uh, 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 when the hot summer comes and rainy season comes then because inside environment is become very hot and humid so it's very difficult to grow the crop during uh, a very high temperature and humid conditions uh, but uh, government has actually uh, promoted a lot of uh, these uh, uh, structures through different schemes such as uh, um, uh, the, through the National Horticulture Board or uh, Ministry of, uh, sorry, Mission of Integrated Development of Horticulture. So, subsidy as uh, uh, Rajinder sir and Rena sir has told that uh, uh, subsidy up to 90% uh, is given in some states. And normally, National Horticulture Board, they give the 50% uh, subsidy, highest uh, that uh, one, one person can claim a subsidy of uh, 56 lakh for a uh, for the uh, two-acre uh, poly house. So, if any young person is interested to adopt uh, this uh, type of technology, so they can uh, uh, approach the National Horticulture Board uh, or uh, for a uh, for the state horticulture department of uh, for for different schemes which are uh, uh, implemented through the state departments and besides that if you are uh, planning something for the export so then you can approach to the apida apida is actually a nodal agency for uh, all the agri horticulture uh, that uh, commodities so Poly house, they are, as I told, they are, they are very good for extended winter season, uh, especially the, in a mild climate, just like in Bangalore or Pune or Himachal or even uh, Nenital area, which we, we, we call a subtropical or subtemperate uh, type climate because they are not, neither too hot, neither too cold. So in those areas, poly houses, they are very, very suitable. Uh, uh, the price of uh, this structure is something like 1000 or uh, uh, 1200 rupees per square meter. So as per your capacity, you can plan your project for one acre, two acre or five acres, something like that. But uh, whenever you plan a project, so you have to see that uh, you have to first uh, take the training, then uh, you have to, uh, after getting proper training, there are a lot of uh, that uh, training institute here in India now, uh, beside the, uh, the agriculture universities or the institution like yours there are uh, uh, that uh, 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 horticulture training center uh, one uh, established by the uh, ministry of agriculture with the state department horticulture department at uh, in almost every state they are called the center of excellence for in the protected cultivation so you have a 
uh, in the Haryana, there is a place called Gronda. You have a center of excellence for vegetable cultivation in Punjab also. In almost every state now you have a uh, the center of protective cultivation. So there you can see the different technologies and uh, uh, growing system. And uh, then next higher level is of uh, fan bed uh, cooling houses. So they, they are very good for actually summer production. Uh, the, you, because uh, you, you have a evaporative type of cooling system here. So cost of uh, this structure is uh, high. Uh, and electrical consumption, that uh, power consumption is also very high in this structure. But uh, if you are uh, growing a, uh, some, uh, you, you are hardening a tissue culture plants, then you need a, this type of uh, um, fan pad structure. And also that uh, uh, if you are uh, propagating nursery uh, propagation purpose, you, you can uh, install this structure. Or maybe the some very high value crops, just like that. If in a urban area that you wanted to have a, uh, hydroponic facility for growing leafy and herbs and uh, uh, that a uh, lot of herbs that uh, now that after the COVID that people are now asking for like basil or sage or uh, asparagus or so many things that uh, exotic vegetable that uh, becoming very popular here even the domestic uh, local uh, herbs also so uh, like tulsi so and uh, dhania so you, if you want to take the dhania during summer, so you need to have this type of facility where you can grow. And most of the hydroponics projects that uh, in the coming up in the urban area like in Delhi or Mumbai or Bangalore or Hyderabad, so they are mostly they are adopting for fan pad type of structure because uh, they they are uh, for a small operation just like five thousand or a thousand uh, square meter uh, that they are structure that that uh, you can uh, produce. Uh, these uh, vegetable for the local consumption actually so uh, there is a facility in uh, in your greater noida also that uh, uh, with the ds group that dharampal satyapal limited they have set up a five acre facility uh, with the dutch technology uh, they are producing all the snacking type of vegetable that like like cucumbers or tomato or uh, capsicum or uh, you can say lot of uh, leafy lettuce uh, iceberg so many that uh, snacking that that slab is so uh, you can adopt uh, such type of technology for uh, if you are uh, uh, from an urban area so you can uh, start such a business uh, in the urban areas because demand is used because yeah, as I have shown in the first or second slide that population growth uh, and urbanization is going up at a very fast rate. So you have, uh, you can, uh, uh, there is a lot of demand for uh, local, local, uh, locally available produce. Just like a, you are now going for a local dairy to have a good quality cow milk. So now the fresh vegetable, if it is produced in your local, in your vicinity, then you will prefer that and you will also pay the, pay the premium for that. So now the next higher level technology that uh, the company for which I am working here is actually uh, uh, they are the, called the retractable roof uh, structures. So because uh, in in the fan pad system uh, there is a lot of power consumption. Uh, you need a, almost uh, uh, 500 to 1000 uh, kilowatt hours uh, of electricity per hectare per day. But uh, that's the, that's the worry actually because uh, 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 most of the uh, in the urban or peri urban areas so because power power is very costly that uh, so you need to go for a uh, other alternate so this actually is a very wonderful technology actually it is a combination of the natural nature plus protection you can say that uh, retractable means that roof is not a stationary. Roof open and close as per your outside weather condition means that just like in the summer, in the morning, evening time, or in the night time, we have a very good condition. So roof will remain retracted. It will close only when you have a uh, temperature 35 plus during daytime, or uh, during winter time you have less than 15 degree, or uh, you have a uh, rainfall, or you have a uh, foggy period or smog that during winter that uh, then uh, whatever the adverse for the crop then the roof will remain closed. 
would feel close automatically. So it's all a weather based technology actually. So uh, the and a lot of projects now coming up in India. We have built up a commercial scale project, a very large project. Uh, I will mention uh, in the later stage also. Uh, in the Noida, uh, uh, not in Noida, but in Mujafanagar, that we are building up a 115 acre single structure. 115 acre single structure to grow the blueberries. So that blueberry is a very high value crop. Price in the retail price is something like 3000 rupee kilo. And now in India that we are importing something like 2000 uh, blueberries in the, uh, in the Indian market. So there is a huge demand for uh, this blueberry because of its, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very good uh, quality, this uh, immunity booster, just like uh, it is a superfood, just like uh, haldi, turmeric, it's a called a superfood. So this is uh, berries, they are a, actually superfood. They have a lot of nutritional health benefits. So uh, this is a video that uh, uh, I will uh, now share with you. So it's... Uh, I hope you will getting the voice also. Actually, voice is voice is coming, but it is coming very low. Okay, okay. I will explain it. Yes, yes. Please do that. So that because now as a uh, lot of demand is coming that uh, people are looking for organic food, uh, naturally grown food and uh, uh, but you know that if you are growing in the nature you need a protection also. So this retractable system is that that uh, uh, it it is a, a combination of you can see the best of open field, net house, poly house, green house. So it's a combination of all the technology in one system. And uh, the beauty of this technology is that power consumption is very, very lesser. It is almost uh, 1 to 2 kilowatt uh, 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 that uh, hours per day per hectare. So it's a very less. If you compare with the fan bed system, it is uh, in the fan bed you are consuming 500 to 1000 kilowatt per day and here just 1 to 2 kilowatt which is even less than your room AC actually for 1 hectare. And uh, other thing that uh, the produce that you get is a natural grown with the full sunlight. It's not a completely closed close environment, it's an open environment. Only when when you need a protection, then the roof it will close automatically. So I will explain the other things also that uh, in the detail in the later uh, my slide. So there are four type of application of this uh, retractable roof technology. First is the greenhouse, means the for the colder area, just like Leh Ladakh area, uh, or in the um, other European climate where you have a uh, winter, extend, very long winter, so you can have a, this a greenhouse. Basically, the greenhouse word means to heat up the environment. You might have heard the greenhouse effect. What is that? That, that uh, your global warming is taking place. So when we are building the greenhouse, that this technology came from the European uh, that uh, climate because they developed it for to their winter production purpose. And in our condition in India, we have, if we put up a greenhouse, so we need to put up uh, the cooling system also to cool down the, that uh, uh, heat that has built up in the side the structure. So we need a cooling house, not a greenhouse in India. So uh, uh, second that application is cooling house actually. So in the cooling house, what we have, uh, you might have seen here that the roof, it is a white in color actually. Here it is a transparent color. It's a green. It, it gives the greenhouse because at, when you have a transparent uh, roof, so you are allowing the sunlight to enter inside. So that uh, infrared when goes inside, so heat will generate. 
but here you are blocking the in the white roof you are blocking the infrared radiation so uh, that will reduce your uh, inside temperature uh, uh, if it is a air temperature so it may be one to three or four degree but the leaf temperature drastically reduced by 15 to 25 degree because for crop production leaf temperature is more important for us as more than the air temperature so uh, then uh, uh, we call field covers also because we, you can cover with the retractable roof any shape any any shape any land it may be rectangular it may be of uh, uh, whatever shape round shape something like that it may be uh, 10 10 hectare or 20 hectare or 100 hectare you can cover uh, uh, with the with this retractable roof structure and orchards also because now very uh, now the that uh, i will uh, in the coming uh, orchard also that a uh, lot of uh, orchards they are coming up with the retractable roof i will mention in the next slides so uh, i will not go here so this is actually controlled environment and environment but uh, now that uh, the growing system what system you need inside so you might have heard the hydroponics word so i will not go that into the definition but the application part i will mention here so aquaponics also uh, that uh, growing the fish and uh, uh, this uh, leafy lettuce herbs uh, together uh, this uh, is a sort of a actually to uh, have a more productivity on a per unit piece of land so this is a aeroponics actually this type of technique is a very uh, good for the potato tuber production we, uh, you might have seen that earlier time that for the seed potato people uh, uh, they they ask for the uh, the seed from the lahol spiti of himachal that uh, they they they, uh, they the, the potato from lahol spiti goes all over the world or india for the seed production uh, seed seed purpose so, but now you can produce the same seed in a uh, this type of aeroponic system and uh, that uh, one quintal of uh, uh, that bag is now you can uh, just a uh, hundred gram of tubers mini tubers that you can produce it's a wonderful technique and itc has adopted it uh, on a very big scale they have a facility here in uh, baddi so they are the largest facility of uh, mini tuber production in uh, uh, in in the world so called techno tuber actually the company so they are supplying the these mini tubers not only to india but uh, also all over the world and mahindra has also built up a very large facility uh, in chandigarh so there are a lot of other other uh, such facilities in uh, punjab so now the many many other people they are adopting such uh, techniques so vertical farming that uh, because land area that uh, with the increasing urbanization population so land area is uh, decreasing so we can go vertically uh, in, in 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 urban area so you can see that uh, uh, with the indoor farming uh, you can adopt these uh, uh, these these uh, this indoor with the controlled environment actually of course you need a uh, controlled environment and you can grow uh, in the vertical farming like mushroom old tree hydroponics powder strawberry also uh, then a uh, lot of leafy vegetable and herbs uh, you can grow like this uh, you can see in the my slide also so it's a very good option for urban farming those people who are interested to adopt such technique of, of course the uh, capital cost is very high for this type of uh, things uh, even the rooftop farming that uh, lot of uh, lot of uh, people they are coming up with the uh, rooftop farming in bangalore especially in mumbai or in maybe in delhi also that so if you have a, enough space on the roof or uh, you can you can do the farming on the rooftop also and uh, uh, precision, precision farming is uh, actually integrated crop management system which actually use the remote sensing gps and the geographical information system to monitor the crop uh, field at the ground level. Uh, Dr. Rajender has uh, actually, because he was mentioning about the nutrient, uh, these, uh, 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 these fertilizer applications. So, because this, uh, this type of precision technology, we, we, we can uh, map the whole area and we can find out that uh, that uh, uh, 
uh, what is the status of the crop. So these techniques, uh, they are actually very, very uh, coming very, very good for. And now with the, uh, that uh, lot of uh, the applications, the app based uh, that uh, applications, the, they are coming up. And uh, if you you have in your institution that a lot of people they are working in the IT sector, so they can develop the such application for the farmer. So not only for the uh, monitoring of the crop, but also for uh, the uh, using of the this uh, inputs and uh, marketing purpose, logistic purpose. So many things that happen. So I will not uh, talk about biotechnology. All of you know. I will talk about the high value crop production. So, uh, crops which give a very good value to you. It may be a vegetable, it may be flower, it may be fruit, or it may be herbs, it may be medicinal plant, whatever the crop that gives good uh, value uh, for a smaller volume. So, that we call a high value crops. So, I will talk more about high value crops. So, there is a very huge opportunity for all of us, young people especially, because technology is now actually... Uh, uh, that uh, we have a lot of available technology, hydroponics, aquaponics, greenhouse, uh, so so many things that, that now we have here in India. And now we can actually produce most of these crops here in India instead of importing from other country. So uh, you see that uh, about 28% uh, uh, of Indian population live in the revenue, which is expected to become, oh, that I have already explained, sorry. So, uh, leafy and herbs that uh, uh, that high value crop that uh, urban people or urban area you can grow these uh, uh, these leafy and herbs in the NFT system. There are different uh, uh, technology of the hydroponics. One is called NFT, the nutrient film te technique. That is small thin layer of uh, that uh, nutrient filled water that is flown through these channels, and uh, only the roots should be. Uh, touching those, that, that water film. So it's a very good technique. Uh, this project that I'm showing here slide in the slide, that is project we have put up here in the Kapaseda in Delhi. Uh, if you, uh, because you are aware about the climate of Delhi, in Noida or NCR region, that summer very hot, winter cold. So uh, this uh, is a retractable roof structure we have put up uh, in Kapaseda. Uh, in, in this system that uh, summer, we have two roofs actually. One that cool the summer temperature uh, from um, um, March onward till October, and another roof that we operate during winter, which uh, which will give the uh, heat up the environment. So both roof they are retractable. So summer roof uh, that use white cooling roof during summer, and the transparent roof we use during winter. And uh, you will be surprised that power consumption is very less that i have already explained that we need just one to two kilowatt hour of uh, electricity per day per hectare so you can imagine that uh, with this power uh, less power we are producing this crop year round so there are other uh, uh, growing technique for uh, leafy also that uh, floating raft is a now new technology that coming up that uh, uh, that uh, not, I, I think it's not available in India, but uh, in many countries in the Middle East, because where you have a summer temperature very high, but also the, the night temperature is also very high there. So if summer temperature is 40 plus uh, Celsius, night temperature is 30 plus Celsius, because to grow this crop for, for, for to have a flowering and fruit setting, so you need to have a cooler night actually. So that problem we do not have in India. Maybe in some part of Rajasthan it may be, but uh, in 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 most of uh, that uh, we have a still a, a comfortable uh, night temperature. But in the Middle East region, night temperature is 30, 30 plus. So you 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 need to have a, that a floating raft system because you have a cool water in the in the base so that uh, uh, you can grow these leafy and herbs. So you can grow a uh, lot of tomatoes actually that still in India that we import this uh, beef tomato actually from Thailand. We are not growing here in India. Uh, although that uh, this this is actually Roma type tomato. But if uh, beef tomato that is used in uh, this uh, 
you can see that uh, the uh, burger and the, all these items you saw, you have said the bigger slice of that tomato. That tomato, if we produce uh, in 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 Perry urban area or something, because lot of this the beef tomato is consumed by the this uh, uh, these uh, food retail chains like uh, uh, McDonald's and so many other uh, that uh, retail chains they are coming up in the urban areas. So you can adopt that. Flour is a, actually a uh, uh, lot of investment has taken taken place in India in during 90s and uh, uh, that uh, 2000 for flour. A lot of uh, export oriented project came here in India, uh, but uh, later on the many of the closed down. So I will not go into detail. So the other crops that like now the uh, fruit crop like apple you can grow under the greenhouse. So uh, the because in India, the yield of apple is uh, uh, 8, uh, 8, 10 or 12 tons per hectare. Whereas uh, in uh, New Zealand or in uh, in many European countries, the yield is 150 tons per hectare. So you can imagine that 15 times higher yield than what we are producing here in India. So if we adopt a proper uh, protection system, just like uh, this uh, structure here, you can see. So you can get a uh, very high yield. And uh, uh, you can uh, you grow this apple in the in the foothill of the Himalaya also. You need not mm -hmm. to go to the Simla or Uti or some higher place. You can grow in the Dehradun or in the, in the, in the even in, in now the one variety that has came up, uh, Anna variety or a one farmer in Himachal Pradesh, the, he has developed a Hariman variety. So he is now uh, harvesting that apple almost... Uh, uh, 15 days earlier than the that normal apple that is harvesting in the month of July or August. So those varieties they are low chilling varieties means that the, the that they did, did not uh, require that uh, less than seven degree uh, centigrade temperature for winter chilling actually for that fruiting and flowering and fruiting could take place. So uh, uh, nursery is uh, also very good opportunity uh, to the people like you young people because you can have a flower nursery you can have a vegetable nursery you have an ornamental nursery now the medicinal plant sector is coming up very fast so Davara has put up a uh, lot of uh, if you are uh, um, from the Pantanagar area so they have a facility there so a huge nursery area so from there they are supplying the nursery to many farmers uh, on the contract farming basis so it, you can think about nursery also uh, now I will talk about uh, some of very high value crops, blueberry, blackberry, strawberry, raspberry, they are a very high value crop because they are highly perishable. So that's why that uh, uh, they are very high value. Most of these berries, they are imported uh, to the other country because we have a very, very limited production here in India. Uh, so you can see the this uh, blackberry. Uh, Price of this blackberry, you can imagine something like uh, 500, uh, 5000 rupees per kilo that uh, the good quality berries that imported into India. This is uh, the red berries for, called raspberry. It's also very high. If you have, if you are in the, this uh, northern climate or in the higher elevation, so you can put up a one acre or two acre or something project like that and you can uh, produce those very, if you are have a, some, uh, uh, that uh, that uh, facility of uh, reformen so that you can uh, in the cold chain you can supply these berries to the nearest market so now that uh, some projects they are coming up uh, in the foothill area also uh, in uh, in punjab or in uh, haryana also so this is a blueberry this this project actually um, we are building up a one of the largest facility in the muzaffarnagar district in western up so uh, blueberry, the price is uh, 3,000 per kilo in the retail market. So you can see here. Cherry, now you, if you go to the market, fruit market, you will get the cherry. So most of cherries, they come either from Simla or Srinagar area. Or the good quality cherries, they, they are imported from the other country. So if uh, any of your student or any of you are from Kashmir area, so it's a very good opportunity if you are putting up a, this a very high uh, density type of plantation of cherry with the under protection. 
so you can harvest your cherry two three weeks earlier so you get a premium price for that avocado that it's a very premium fruit a super food you can see that uh, every in every place now uh, you are getting avocado it need as a subtropical type of climate mild type of climate not very hot not very cold also so if you are a belonging to the uh, this uh, that the uh, shivalik hill region or something that uh, uh, in the mid zone but you call say 1000 meter to 1500 meter so you can grow this uh, avocado is very well and uh, in some areas you need a protection against the frost also so you can put up a, this, this type system and Rajendra single piece of Rajendra ji just wind up and so because okay, we have okay. some lot of questions okay, to okay, interact okay 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 i will do yes. so the sweet pepper then uh, this is cannabis actually now the some medicinal value is very high of this cannabis so in india still uh, we are very conservative to go ahead with the cannabis production but uh, uh but in the western country like in canada or usa they are uh, using they are making lot of product of this cannabis not only for medicinal purpose but also for the recreational purpose also nutraceutical actually that's uh, this uh, actually after the covid during the covid or after covid this uh, field will grow very fast dr rena is uh, belonging to this field uh, he i taught us all those uh, uh, medicinal plants all this thing uh, so during the last uh, two years i'm seriously working on this field and we have put up a one project in hyderabad where they are growing uh, this uh, uh, turmeric uh, with a very high curcumin content of 9 to 10 percent for the export market and you will be surprised that uh, that jo haldi wala doodh jo ab usa aur uk aur canada mein bhi as a drink so use milta hai market mein to you can imagine that the kitna demand badh raha hai ashwagandha so very very picking up very fast so uh i am just uh, i will just show one slide that you can put up a such uh, structures uh, for the animals also so uh, so what what i want to uh, share with the, uh, you young people that uh, lot of opportunities are there in india if uh, but you have to go with the right type of technology right type of technology right type of uh, uh, people so if you are combining all those right technologies there is a very good uh, good uh, potential for uh, uh, doing the business in india thank you very much thank you very much for listening and having a patience thank you very much for this amazing very interesting informative presentation almost you covered almost all the system not left even a single system so it is good thing Now we we'll request to Dr. Rana, Rana to give out this uh, handle this question and answer session. He has received the many questions. Uh, Rajender ji, uh, let me first compliment you for wonderful presentation you made, and your presentation Thank was you, very Thank interesting. You, and I believe the audience must have got immensely benefited. Uh, we have some questions in mind. Uh, and uh, which which are which are many the audience in, from the audience they have also privately sent their questions uh, one of the major thing that is bothering all of us is the cost uh, implication of all these advanced production systems can a common consumer afford horticulture agriculture produce after grown uh, which are grown under these advanced uh, production systems what is the uh, what is the cost implication of all these technologies on the consumer and on the farmer and all the entire sector uh thanks sir it's a very uh, relevant question um although that cost of uh, production is uh, uh, high uh, with the such type of production system but once the technology actually will expand uh, the people will scale up uh, so uh, i am sure that uh, cost will go down so uh, you will be surprised that uh, 
a uh, few years back that uh, cherry tomato is uh, import price of cherry tomato is something like 1000 rupee kilo but now it has came down to uh, 200 rupee per kilo or even less than 200 rupee kilo so once the technology actually expands on the people adopt the technology so definitely the uh, price will go down there's a worry amongst the farmers especially Yes. That more technological intervention in our agri system will make agriculture, especially the future agriculture, much more industry driven rather than the agriculturist driven. Uh, what do you have to say to stem this concern? Because sometimes down the line there is a resistance to incorporate more and more technology. How would you uh, <laughs> it's a very tricky question, Rena, sir. Uh, actually, that uh, if you see the any advanced economies, actually, so they have uh, uh, very less population dependent upon agriculture, actually. Four or five percent or ten percent, less than ten percent population that is dependent of, on the agriculture. In India, we have almost uh, 65, 70 percent population that dependent on agriculture. So, with the uh, uh, with the uh, coming of this technology so that the government is also thinking to have actually to shift the people from farming sector to the other industrial or uh, that uh, manufacturing or other sector service sector so that their um, income level can uh, they can get the higher income because in our uh, traditional farming system Farmer, they are not uh, getting uh, the that uh, the income. So with this, uh, this with this actually, uh, you are right that uh, all these uh, technology driven, they are industry driven actually technologies. So more 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 industries they will come up because uh, not only with the structure but also the cold cold chain or. Are you there? All the industry processing also has to be driven. Have to decrease the I hope uh, your internet is behaving uh, erratically. Uh, just uh, ca can you hear me now? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm getting you. Yeah. Dr. Rena? the session because we have to prepare for the next session also yes uh, so uh, i'm done with the okay. questions and if there are uh, any questions from the panel or so then we can uh, say uh -huh. formal thank you thanks proposal board yeah. thanks to i'll ask only one question to dr rajita ji yes that uh, uh, what are the skill sets which you suggest a student should have to adopt these uh, to be like uh, employable in these kind of systems. Uh, can you repeat, ma'am? What are the skill sets the student should acquire to get employability in this particular sector? Any specific skill, skill set which you think they should acquire apart from the normal horticulture uh, education? Uh, um, it's a very uh, um, good that uh, because um, that uh, now the some uh, uh, specialized type of training actually that uh, uh, for uh, and facilities they are required actually. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Amiti University has the capability. They they have already doing a very wonderful job, and uh, I know that most of uh, people in the Amiti University they are from. Uh, Pantanagar or many uh, that all the agri universities guys. So uh, only the some uh, facilities are needed for for uh, actually the training and demonstration facility. Then uh, students uh, they I think uh, you are already uh, teaching horticulture and uh, other courses there. But uh, some advanced type of facilities, they, they, these are created in the university campus. So they will get a chance to get uh, handled with those facilities. Okay. So you mean yeah, to say yeah. they catch? Okay. 
Yeah, ma'am. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. So, yeah, maybe Dr. Rena, you can propose a vote of thanks and then, uh, or maybe. Uh, I mean, it has been quite wonderful session, wonderful session uh, for the simple reason, but it has come from the person who has worked on the ground, knows the ground reality, and he has transmitted the knowledge, his experience in such a smooth manner that all of us were intently listening to you, sir. And, uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, this is, an, although this was a very short interaction because of this workshop, but we believe that we will be interacting much more now beyond this workshop so that we, yes, you can, we can also have your services, your expertise uh, imparted to our uh, student directly in one, on one-to-one -one basis. And maybe look, we can look for some future collaboration partnerships with you and your company. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, with this, on behalf of uh, MIT University, Agriculture Food and um, um, Agriculture Foundation of MIT, MIT Institute of Horticulture Studies, uh, and uh, and um, uh, and uh, Agriculture Agri Horti Domain of uh, MIT University, and on especially on behalf of our founder president, sir, uh, I express my deep gratitude to you to accept, spare your time, valuable time, to interact and share your experience with us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much once and uh, once again. Uh, we will be in touch with you. Uh, with sure, ma'am. Sure, okay. ma'am. Yes. We will uh, definitely. Also sure, ma'am. From bottom of our heart. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you can close. Uh, me?